It is Dave from the Camera Store. And if you're an outdoor photographer or you know somebody who's big into shooting outside, I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of different gear that I like to take with me when I'm outside shooting. Let's talk about cameras. Today I brought the Nikon Z5 and for me it's a really good balance of feature set and price point. I like that it has 24 megapixels. That's enough resolution for most of the needs I have. I also have 4.5 frames per second, dual card slots for redundancy, great ergonomics, and a viewfinder that I like looking through. Nikon's done an exceptionally good job with this viewfinder. And when I'm looking at wildlife for long periods of time, I'm really not getting any eye fatigue and I really like what I see. The other thing I like about the Nikon Z5 is it is a weather resistant camera. When I'm outside shooting in the elements, it's nice to have a camera that can keep up with me. I'm not really worried about it getting a little bit wet here and there. I do like the weight of this camera as well. When I'm backpacking, it's less weight to carry than some bigger, larger SLRs I used to carry in the past. And I like that it fits in my backpack quite nicely. Of course, there are a bunch of other options on the market as far as cameras go. And it's up to you to decide what's important for you. Is resolution more important? Do frames per second matter? If you're shooting birds in flight, for instance, you want a higher frame rate typically. These are questions you have to ask yourself and see what's the best fit for you. Let's talk lenses. Most people have a general purpose lens in their kit, like a 24 to 70, for instance, and that gives you a little bit of wide angle, a little bit of telephoto, but not crazy extreme on either end. Right off the bat, I'm going to talk about wildlife and being able to shoot with a lens like this. This is a 150 to 600 from Sigma. Now, this represents a great telephoto lens, which allows you to photograph birds, for instance, which are always very elusive and kind of tricky. And I can bring them in much closer and get some great shots. Now, usually when you think about third party lenses, you don't think that they're going to be that great. But Sigma has come a long ways in recent years, and now they have some of the top optics out there. I really enjoy the fit and finish of this lens. I like that it complements the weather ceiling of the Z5 and allows me to get some great shots and a lot of flexibility when it comes to shooting wildlife. I do like that the zoom ring is a very short throw and I also appreciate that it is an optically stabilized lens. Sigma also has a fantastic seven year warranty here in Canada. Something I also have in my kit all the time is an ultra wide angle lens. Now I love shooting ultra wide when it comes to cloud cover and sunrises and sunsets. It really makes the sky massive and it looks fantastic. It also allows me to put a really interesting foreground element, a, a, a tree, a bush, a flower, something like that into the front to make the shot a little more interesting. Today I'm shooting with the Sigma 14mm 1.8 Aperture Art Series lens. It's a stellar performer. It's great optically. It comes at a bit of a price, but for me the 1.8 Aperture is well worth it. Often when I'm shooting sunrise and sunset, and especially stars, light gathering ability is everything, and that's a big reason why I love this lens. It allows me to capture those kind of scenes with a much more flexibility than some other lenses on the market. Whew, that breeze is chilly. I'm glad I got some gloves today. Well, it's not very cold right now. We're hovering just above freezing, but with the wind, it is really hard on the hands, especially when you're hanging on to a cold camera or a lens. And this is where I find the heat gloves are almost an essential accessory if you're shooting in sort of lower temperature climates. Now, I like how modular this whole system is. You start with a liner. You have a couple different choices to choose from. You have three fingers that are actually usable for touch screens, for instance, on the back of your camera or an iPad or an iPhone or something like that. I don't need to remove them to still use it. I can put in a hot pack into the pocket in the back here to keep my hands extra warm. Now, if it gets colder than that, I can throw on their mittens. And these are great because they still allow me to open up the palm here, pull my fingers out and still make use of the camera and then tuck them back in when I need to. And I do have an additional hot pocket packet here that I can apply to that. Now I can tell you shooting with cold hands sucks. And we've used these in the Yukon, for instance, when it was minus 40, it was ridiculously cold and they kept me really nice and warm. Highly recommended, they're a bit pricey, but I would not go anywhere cold without them now. Let's talk about tripods. This is the Vanguard VO 264CB carbon fiber tripod. Now I like carbon fiber as a tripod material. It generally is a lighter weight material to work with, but also it absorbs vibration better than aluminum does, which is the whole point of a tripod. I like the size and the height of this tripod. For most applications, it works really well. The grip locks make it easy to adjust the height width, and this ball head is quite functional with an integrated pan head, which gives you a lot of flexibility. One thing you have to consider when you're buying a tripod, is it gonna handle the size and weight of your camera system? 
The last thing you want is to have a big camera and a lens on top here that's shaking on top of the tripod. It defeats the entire purpose of it. So make sure you do your research and that the tripod and the ball head especially are going to handle the weight that you're going to put on top of it. This tripod has an Arca Swiss compatible head, which is really important because it allows you to run things like an L bracket. You're like, why do I need an L bracket? What does this mean? If I want to shoot a horizontal shot, great, this is what's going to work. The center of gravity goes straight through the middle of the tripod. But for instance, if I just take my camera and I rotate it 90 degrees, suddenly I'm taking all that weight of the camera and shifting it off to the side. The tripod is inherently less stable. L brackets kind of fix this. So it's an additional thing you attach to the bottom of your camera. I can utilize the L bracket to flip the camera 90 degrees and keep the center of gravity running straight through the middle of the tripod. Today I'm using a small rig L bracket for the Z5. It's a really well designed, well machined product. They make all kinds of cages and accessories for a variety of cameras. As you can see, I've switched back to the 150 to 600 from Sigma, and I've also switched my tripods. This is the Leo Photo 365C carbon fiber tripod. And I've done that for two reasons. One is weight capacity, and the other is height. This is a much bigger, heavier duty tripod for the combination that I have. Now, if you're wondering what this contraption is on top, those of you who don't know what this is, this is what they call a gimbal head. And this is great. This is a heavier lens, and if I'm hand-holding this all day long, I'm really going to feel it in my neck and in my shoulders and in my arms. If I'm observing wildlife, imagine like ducks on a pond or a deer in a field, that nothing that's too aggressive autofocusing like a bird in flight, for instance. This allows me to easily take a much heavier camera system like this and observe wildlife for long periods of time without any of that fatigue. I'm utilizing the Yilangyu brand of gimbal, which is a great entry-level gimbal head that doesn't break the bank. I like the overall height of this tripod. It's taller than it needs to be for level kind of shooting, but if I'm observing a bird up in a tree in a nest, for instance, I can easily tilt the lens up like this, and I don't have to crouch down myself and really strain my legs or my back observing something for a long period of time. It's a much more comfortable shooting position. Most people don't think that upgrading their camera strap is an upgrade, but it really is, and it's one of the more functional tools that I've upgraded to, and I love it. Peak Design makes a great camera strap. Their whole system is based on the anchor link. This allows you to attach a camera or a lens in a bunch of different ways. The strap just clips on and off really conveniently. For instance, if you put your camera on a tripod and you don't want your camera strap hanging off of it because it's a pulling point or a danger, you can simply detach the camera strap or put on a different strap of during widths or a wrist strap, for instance. When it comes to photographing wildlife, half the battle is finding the wildlife. And that's where a nice pair of binoculars really come into play. These are the Zeiss Terra ED 10x42 binoculars. And it's a great magnification for spotting wildlife from a distance before you try and move in and photograph it. These are very well-priced, well-built pair of binoculars that are easy to use and I'm glad I have in my bag. We just had a great buck show up in the field beside us here, so we pulled over. I didn't have a chance to grab my tripod, so I grabbed a really cool accessory called the Puffin Pad. And this lays over top of your door sill and allows you to rest your camera on it and provide a lot more stabilization than you would hand holding it. Now, what's cool about this is you can actually place it on top of a fence post or on a railing or something like that. It's lightweight, easy to carry. It really adds a lot of stability to your shots. We've talked a lot today about different gear to carry with you and to make the outdoor experience much better. We haven't talked really about how to carry all that gear. If I'm going to be out and about for a long period of time, I do like a great backpack to walk around with. Right now I'm wearing the Shimoda Explorer 40 backpack system and it's wicked because it does have a modular kit on the bottom so I can take out different gear as I need it and make it adapt to whatever system I'm working with. I like the fact that it holds a tripod on the side quite nicely and conveniently, fully weather sealed zipper. The one thing about this bag I really like is that it's one of the few bags on the market that's adjustable to your torso length. Now if you're like me and like to travel light and not carry a laptop around but you tend to shoot a lot, there's a device out there called the Narbox. This is essentially a hard drive and a computer built into one that you interact with with your cell phone or a smart device. Now it's great because I can dump my memory cards directly to this. It has a built-in SD card reader, or I can plug in anything through the USB-C. But interacting with your phone is fantastic because I can run Lightroom Mobile, for instance, on my device and process images on the go without carrying around an expensive or heavy laptop that's going to take up a lot of space. Now for outdoor photographers, it is waterproof and it does have some shock rating as well. Now we've talked a lot of gear today, but we've barely scratched the surface. There are so many options on the market for accessories and bodies and lenses and all kinds of stuff like that. Now I want to know what you guys love about outdoor photography and the kit that you always take with you no matter what. Leave them in the comments down below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll catch you again really soon.
All right, thanks for sticking around. If you want to check out our most recent episode, click up here. And if you want to find some other accessories that we forgot to talk about, like filters, a mini tripod, rain covers, for instance, and you're Canadian and you want to shop local, check out thecamastore.com.